I'll use using different instruments. Here are the data that I'm preparing, but before we get into the study description, I'll just say that um, it has a somewhat complicated history. So for a long, long time, I obviously wanted to measure cultural values uh, and compare the instruments for quality. As you know, um, in fact, let me share the screen and show you. As you may know, um, for many years, one of my um, hobbies or side products have been collecting instruments for measuring cultural values. So if you go to my website, I think I even have the um, catalog on my website. So yes, instrument catalogs, and I have an instrument for measuring cultural values and for measuring acculturation. And so the instrument for measuring cultural values um, contains, um, it's an, a little outdated version of the instrument, but um, at the time I updated it last time, I had 145 instruments for measuring cultural values. And so ever since I published this catalog, uh, so for each of these instruments, as you will see, we have who did the instrument, develop the instrument, what exactly is included in that instrument, items, grouping, scoring, so whatever information I could find for each of them. How many items, uh, what's the answer key, and all that stuff. And so ever since I published that instrument, many people um, and many libraries came to me and asked uh, first if they can print it and use it for their own purposes. But very often, literally in hundreds of cases, I, I would receive the question, which instrument is the best? Which one I would recommend uh, for studies? And uh, it's a very good question. I don't know the answer. I have my own favorite instruments, but I cannot objectively say which one is better, which one is worse. In fact, I've developed a couple of my own instrument for, uh, instruments uh, for measuring cultural values. And at least so far, it looks like that's probably one of them is the best uh, there is. But I never specifically tested the quality of these instruments against one another, including for um, um, you know internal reliability, factor structure, predictive validity, convergent, divergent validity, those kinds of things. And so the way I envisioned this study was uh, that we would have uh, the, same, the same sample or the same cohort of students, uh, and they would take many different uh, instruments for measuring cultural values. And then we will use those data to test which of the instruments is most uh, robust when it comes to psychometric properties, as well as most suitable for individual level measurement, for team level measurement, and so on and so forth. So we can start with uh, internal reliabilities, convex alphas, move on to factor structure, exploratory, confirmatory, uh, look at what's included in each instrument and compare you know, the content, the dimensions, the number of items, the point of reference, are the questions like in Hofstadter's instrument about individual perceptions and preferences, or are they about uh, the society, like in the global study, where each item starts in this country or in this society. So it would be a nice review of you know, uh, instruments and concluded with uh, maybe some sort of a recommendation or conclusion as to which one is the best for which purpose. Now I see Nicole also commented on this idea and said that maybe we can do something with a cultural archetype idea. And this is a wonderful idea, although it will change the focus of the study and it seems to me like it would be a separate paper. Great, separate paper, nobody thought about that. Now, the reason I said it's a complicated study or a complicated history is because, as I said, I wanted to do the study for you know literally a decade, uh, ever since I published that uh, Jim paper, uh, 50 Years of Measuring Culture. And that one, I reviewed instruments. Again, uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's uh, I think the title is Half a Century. Um, of measuring culture. If you put my name there, the study should come up um, yeah, right here. So it uh, pops up and you can read the whole paper. And uh, I'm not sure what's this first link. It seems like it's some sort of a, um, yeah, that's actually the study yeah, with all the papers and stuff. So in this one, I reviewed um, how culture had, had been measured uh, in general without reference to specific instruments, all, although uh, we did look at some specific instruments without assessing the quality of the instruments themselves. And so obviously the follow-up uh, would have been this study. The complication is that quite a few colleagues inquired about a possibility of doing this follow-up study. So for example, um, Ana uh, from Portugal um, said that maybe we should do it and we even had a discussion about it in, in Italy. 
Then another colleague here at my university, Madeline Stackhouse, around that same time thought about doing something similar. And then a few other colleagues, when they've heard about the idea, said, oh, if you do it, let me know, maybe I get involved. And so one of the challenges here will be sort of authorship and ownership of this study. The best way forward might be actually to pull all of those resources. Anybody who was interested in this study, let's work together and do it together. But again, it's not as you know new and not as clean as far as who does what. And to some extent, that's why I never proceeded with that because it's a little complicated now, you know, who should be doing what. But I think if we pull all of our resources and everybody does a little bit, you know, uh, helps, I think it might be a very good study. And then what Nicole is proposing here is a whole new, different paper, again, something to look at. And so one of the complicating factors, so here when we look at the data, I prepared the data, so I'll explain the data in a minute. Um, one of the challenges here was um, how do you assess um, sort of usefulness of an instrument? I mean, yes, we can look at the internal reliabilities, spectra structures, those kinds of things, which is easy, but is necessarily the instrument that has the highest alphas is the best instrument. And so um, one of the utility measures can actually be predictive validity or at least some sort of a criterion validity. Like if this instrument really measures, I don't know, power distance or masculinity or um, alternative avoidance, then it should correlate with behaviors that you know, are relevant in this context. If, for example, people are collectivists, maybe they will be closer with their team or if they are high power distance, maybe they will be uh, you know, perceiving their teachers differently. So there could be all kinds of validation uh, constructs that can be used to see if those cultural values measured by the instrument correlate with constructs and factors that theoretically should correlate with them. Or do they predict any behaviors that need to be predicted? And again, it's a little tricky here because another paper that I wrote um, published in Journal of Applied Psychology, uh, that one was called um, um, 50 years of some, something like cultures consequences review or something like that. And so there we looked at um, about 50 different organizational behaviors uh, and how they correlate with culture. So do cultural values actually predict anything? And yes, indeed they do, but only a very, you know, to a very little extent because in most cases culture moderates relationships but doesn't necessarily predict directly. I mean, there is no reason to believe that um, people from individualist cultures perform better or, or are more likely to show up for work or, you know, things like that. And so while we found a number of correlations, and the study is very widely cited, by the way, I think it's my most cited study, but the conclusion was that culture as a direct predictor doesn't necessarily explain much and doesn't necessarily predict, you know, everything. So, but in any case, for validation purposes, it would be nice to show that not only instrument XYZ has better psychometric properties, but also that um, this instrument, whatever it measures, the results of this test correlate with, uh, you know, things it should correlate. And so I never could wrap up my head enough with what those outcomes would be. But what I did over the last couple of days, I went through Hofstadter's um, Cultures of Consequences textbook as well as uh, through the GLOBE uh, book. And I looked at what they either hypothesize or even test as, you know, when they do the validation of their instruments. And so while we didn't have all of those variables, we had quite a few. And so I included some uh, here so that we can then test predictive validity of these different instruments. So we will be probably using mainly individual level data here. So I don't think we need to predict anything at the team level, like team performance. Uh, unless we wanted to do some sort of cultural profiles of the team members. In that case, it's a whole different story. But here I thought I would still include um, demographics, just in case we need to do this maybe for some control purposes or you know some other reasons. Then uh, I included here barriers or perceptions of barriers uh, to team effectiveness. So at the beginning of each semester and at the end of each semester, we ask students to first predict and then describe to what extent different factors were a problem for their team. Things like uh, cultural differences, things like uh, language differences, uh, prejudice, stereotypes. I'm not sure to what extent these things would be correlated with values, but 
there is a good chance that some correlation will be there. Maybe people high on uncertainty avoidance would expect more problems. Or maybe people with um, high power distance orientation will ex expect more challenges due to, you know, a consensus finding and things like that. So communication styles, uh, again, we have, you know, uh, communication styles like avoiding, like confrontation. I don't know, maybe masculinity correlates more with a confrontational style and femininity more with accommodating style. Maybe people from power, high power distance will avoid conflicts altogether or in terms of avoidance. So I'm not sure, but it seems like it should be you know, relevant here. Communication frequency, we have a whole bunch of them and I'm not sure if it would be correlated, but it seems to me that maybe people from collectivist cultures communicate more or maybe people from cultures with feminine values like harmony and all of that, maybe they'll communicate more. Not sure, but worthwhile checking, so I included that here. Likewise, the types of tools they use, like Skype, Dropbox, email, maybe again, people from high uncertainty avoidance cultures will prefer to rely on, I don't know, face-to-face -face communication so that less information is lost. Not sure there will be any correlation, but I included it here just to be sure. Um, now, this one's interesting. So communication medium richness, this data or this thing was measured for a whole different study and I would be very careful with using it here just so we don't have an overlap. But um, in a few semesters, we asked people to assess the importance or amount of information transmitted through different mediums, like words, like gestures, like context, uh, and things like that. And again, presumably people from collectivist cultures attribute more weight or more value to context, nonverbal communication, whereas people from individualist cultures, uh, they tend to say things with words. So they would say probably expect that, you know, most of the information is transmitted through words and not gestures and mimics or, or context. So let's test that so it seems to be relevant in the context, at least individualism, collectivism, maybe some other dimensions as well. Conflict frequency, masculinity, femininity maybe, you know, masculine, people with masculine values tend to be more confrontational. So maybe uh, that would be good for validation. Conflict resolution styles similar to communication styles. So we have concession, accommodation, exchange. Again, it seems like it should correlate with the values, cultural values. Uh, I didn't include cultural intelligence. No reason to believe that some values would correlate better with cultural intelligence. Uh, so we don't have that. Um, cultural background, country. Again, we might want to cross-validate these instruments against uh, against Hofstede and uh, against um, uh, Globe studies. And so we might want to see if, uh, in our case, indeed, we do see uh, more collectivism in China and more individualism in the United States. So we might want to do some sort of analysis by country here. And uh, while the goal of the study is not to rank nations on cultural values, it may be useful to know the nationality of the respondents to see if these values cluster as predicted by the theory, sort of East versus West maybe, or some other thing and, you know, with other studies. Uh, and then this is the main block. So the instruments, in fact, maybe let me highlight it in different color because here we have instrument by Dorfman and Howell, by Führer, Globe Smart, Hofstede's uh, value survey module, a different instrument, uh, like just a few items, other orientation, you will not use that one. Schwartz, uh, Vittel, um, so what else do we have here? Voyage, and I've worked as the Exculture instrument, which I hope will be the best one, but again, we'll have to see, and you. So we have a total of what, eight or nine instruments here, and these are pre-selected instruments. So um, before, um, uh, you know, select, before we decided on these eight or nine, I literally had a catalog of like 150 instruments. And so these are presumably already better ones at least based on face validity. But uh, we'll see if one of them or several of them are better than others. And so for each of these instruments, uh, you will see that the items have, uh, the, you know, kind of named like this. So you have CV for cultural values, then U for the author of the instrument, and it can be Hofstede or it can be whatever it is. Mass, that's for the dimension, masculinity or collectivism here, or long-term orientation, or power distance, uncertainty avoidance, and so on. And then the last part that's just the unique to the item, 
what the item is about. So, but in any case, when we will be doing the factor analysis or when we will be doing the uh, internal re reliability assessment, we need to do it by the dimension. And so that's how you know which item corresponds to which dimension. I included emotional intelligence. Not sure if it's supposed to correlate with cultural values, but we might want to take a look here and see. Uh, language proficiency, probably not needed, but uh, if we wanted to have some sort of a control, you know, maybe people uh, who don't speak English well, maybe, I don't know, they respond to those questions in a more random manner, and as a result, that undermines the reliability of the instrument. Locus of control, uh, maybe, you know, somewhat related to uncertainty avoidance or masculinity femininity. Um, peer evaluations, I included it all here, but it's probably not necessary. There is no reason to believe that people from some cultures always get better peer evaluations. But some of these dimensions may be relevant. Like, for example, we measure friendliness, collegiality. Again, maybe people from feminine cultures are more collegial, whereas people from masculine cultures are less friendly and more confrontational. Uh, we have also intellectual, intellectual contribution and creativity of the ideas. Again, maybe uncertainty avoidance is a factor here. Maybe people from uncertainty avoidance cultures or avoidant cultures are less likely to be creative and then just stick with, you know, Things. We have leadership here. Again, maybe masculine values are associated with people being more likely to aspire a leadership role on the team, you know, things like that. So I don't know if all of them will be needed, but I included it here. And uh, we also have self evaluations here. Again, uh, presumably people from individualist cultures are more self promoting. So we may have to take a difference between self evaluation and other evaluations and see how, uh, you know, cultures, uh, cultural values cor correspond to that gap. Do people from individualist cultures really more self-promoting or less self-promoting? Personality, there was a paper by um, Hofstede and McGraw like years, years ago, like 10, 15, 20, maybe even years ago. And they literally found correlation between Hofstede's values and uh, personality, and even did like national profiles or something like that. So maybe we'll want to test that. So presumably uncertainty avoidance correlates with neuroticism. Um, individualism correlates with openness to experience. Uh, high power distance correlates with um, 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 conscientiousness and things like that. So we might want to test it. Uh, so let's see if I have anything else. Self-efficacy, again, probably people who are more masculine and more individualist are probably you know, more self-confident, but we can test and see if that's the case. Trust, again, maybe uh, on the one hand, you know, when we talk about swift trust, propensity to trust, some people can say maybe collectivists are less likely to trust strangers because they tend to trust in groups. So we'll, we'll, we can test that. Uh, team climate perceptions, I included it here, but that's where we are getting in some territory where, you know, it's a little uh, murky. So uh, we probably don't expect to see um, a correlation between cultural values and perceptions of the team climate, but I don't know, maybe it would be relevant so included it here. Um, and perceptions of team culture, again, probably not relevant, but you know, we might wanna see it. Uh, how close people see it, their team members, I'll include that. Again, it might be useful here because, uh, you know, collectivism, individualism seems like a relevant dimension. Again, hard to say, but seems worthwhile testing and trying. Team identification, again, maybe collectivists are more likely to identify with the team, or maybe they identify only with the in-groups, in people of their same background. So here we have very strangers, and maybe they will identify less with the strangers. And uh, team trust, again, same thing here. I don't think we need anything else here, but these seem to me like most likely, you know, candidates for a validation study. And so we don't need this. Uh, another measure of team climate, I just added it now, so um, I didn't have the chance to um, sort it properly, but that's another measure of team climate. So we might want to check and see if there is any uh, correlation here. So um, let's test and see if um, any of this is relevant to our study. But yes, uh, the initial stage will be very simple. We have eight instruments. Let's test, uh, let's test internal reliability, uh, exploratory factor analysis, confirmatory factor analysis, whatever other tests we normally do when we assess the value of the quality of the instruments. 
then we will look at um, you know content of those instruments, uh, other questions about the team, about individual preferences, country stuff, and then in the end, uh, predictive validity, criterion validity, convergent validity with other instruments, divergent validity from other constructs and things like that. So we can test it and then see and yeah, that's where we'll stand. So if I missed anything, let me know. Um, if I included too much, which I probably have, we can always delete the data and go from there.